Mm. Should I just take my hair down? No, Lucy. Cancel this episode. No. Oh my gosh. It's an important episode. We have Shane, what? my boyfriend. Do I call him we have, Dawson? No, when we he have comes? Shane motherfucking Dawson. Out here on the podcast. Out in these streets. <laughs> Show your boobs, Chris. <laughs> Boy, Whoa, you are really gonna do it? Yeah, I hate that. I mean, a lot of people give me flack for not calling you my fiance. They get really, really mad about it. But for some reason, I just hate the term fiance. Uh, and I've been in a lot of environments where if somebody is a fiance and I don't refer to them as such, they get mad at me. I get mad at you. So I will not take the reverse of that when I don't call your husband your husband. When you call Jim my boyfriend, I get mad. Do you is someone showing their boobs or not? <laughs> I can give you a little well you don't want to see mine they're boring <laughs> you see mine every day every day well I guess that's true oh shit did oh, we wow. just get to oh. don't rub it <laughs> why I'm it's aroused. making everyone uncomfortable hey for Chris. Shane welcome Chris. to the podcast hi wow so good to be here uh, oh well, I meant that real. Oh. It's just weird because, like, I'm sitting on, like, a not real chair in, like, a weird part of the living room that nobody ever sits. So. That's where I am on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the vibe's off. <laughs> That's why, yes. Ooh, I feel negative. <laughs> that is. So I posted a uh, Q&A on Instagram. I was like, what do you want to know? And a lot of the questions were straight up, like, why are you mean to Ryland in the vlogs? And I thought I'd give you an opportunity to air your grievances. I don't think I mean to you in the vlogs. I don't think so either, but it's perceived as such. You know that. I think because me and you have a, a relationship where we like to poke and be mean to each other, and then but we love each other. It's, I can't see, also if people are watching. I can't see him because the tripod's blocking him. So oh, I'm like, yeah, I, that was not a dig at you. Wow, <laughs> I'm sorry. I can see you perfectly. <laughs> we can fix it. We can adjust yeah. the angle so you can see me. If you want, if you haven't had enough of me, yes, I can do it. Yeah, just move it over there, Chris. You just sit pretty. <laughs> you just relax, Chris. Relax, Chris. Um, I don't think I'm mean. Do you think I'm mean? No, not at all. I, I think you're particularly kind on the vlog as a fan and a friend. <laughs> I've noticed. Lizzie just told me she felt obligated to watch the vlogs as though it was a job. <laughs> it's literally in the contract he made me sign. <laughs> Lizzie's not mean either. None I of think, us are mean. I no think some of mean. your humor can be perceived as mean if people don't have like good friends in their life. Sorry. Whoa. I don't I'm oh. just saying like you know Sorry, like, all of y'all are some friendless. I feel attacked. <laughs> when you have a really good friend, you can like say things that are funny. And I don't I think <laughs> And when if, you have a bad friend, you have to be dry and dull. If you said something that was mean and okay. we got in a real fight, I would cut it out of the video. Here's what I will say though. When the camera turns on, I do like get lost in it and I kind of take on a bit or a persona or whatever and I try not to do that anymore but like with Chris for example like my bit with Chris is like I'm trying to fuck him really hard <laughs> but in real life we're, that's, we're not doing that okay good to know <sighs> unfortunately <laughs> yet and then yeah like me and you like I'm kind of mean to you you're kind of mean to me but in real life well, I guess we do do that mm. yeah I mean depending on the day every couple has their little tiffs and their yeah. little riffs but we swim right through them uh, Lizzie how are you <laughs> I'm good <laughs> that's I'm it good. <laughs> thanks for being here thanks for having me no I'm good um, did you <laughs> I don't know you've been the one dragging us about how we're animal hoarders all day joking that you've called the what uh, the state mm -hmm. or the city I guess yeah what to come and take half these animals us? nothing I have no questions for you I actually just met your new kitty upstairs you Louis? Louis. Louis. And also, I think it's so sweet that he came into your lives. Yeah. Or lives. She did make the connection, too, <laughs> that he is the same coloring of Mario and would be the same age. Okay. Which I, devastates me. I love that. Yeah. I had a moment last night where I almost cried. So I was, well, first of all, I cried because I watched 17 again, which is such an emotional movie. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Wait, with Zac Efron. Wait, I used to watch Charlie St. Cloud with a blender full of red wine just so I could feel something that wasn't Aww. about myself. <laughs> Aww. Back to you. Wow, I haven't seen that one. And this, you want to cry. Now we're in a serious fight. You keep doing this. You're watching like amazing movies. Amazing. Once I go to bed, you know, no. <laughs> Oscar winning movies such as 17 again. With Freaky Matthew Friday. Perry. <laughs> no, they are though. Oh my God, Lindsay the Lohan. Freaky Friday fucking goes. Joe and I just rewatched that. It's, wow. Yeah. Joe's it watching it? Yeah. 
<laughs> one of the best made comedies I've ever seen. I was like, yeah, which I one is this? Freaky Friday with Jamie, Jamie Lee Curtis. Curtis. So Lilo. good. Anyways, back to my sad uh, dead cat <laughs> drama. Um, no, so I was laying on the couch. I was crying over Seventeen again, and I had Louis. And then I looked at Louis, and I had a moment where I was like, "Are you Mario? Or like, are you from Mario? Did Mario bring you to me?" And he looks up at me, and then I realize I look down, and he's cuddled with me, and I'm wearing my Super Mario shirt. <gasps> oh fuck! It was nuts, That's and I had like, chills. "Oh my god!" I was just like, "Whoa!" And but then it was that moment where I'm like, "Oh my god! Okay, is he a person? Oh my god!" Like, like it was like a weird, scary moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when well, you... like, because it's like anything that's supernatural or not like practical, it can be a little bit overwhelming. But I think yeah. that that's sweet. Such as Freaky Friday. When... Such as Freaky Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine waking up in Jamie Lee Curtis's body. Also, side note. this is uh, see, I'm just going to go on a little tiny rant. So I watch Freaky Friday. I go to YouTube and I search Freaky Friday because I want to see some B-roll, some behind the scenes. And a bunch of stuff started popping up. All these Gen Z, which I love Gen Z. No, no offense. You do? But, Yes. He has to say that. We all have to say no, that. No, we don't. We all love Gen I Z. I don't care. Make a TikTok about me. Tell them you care. love Gen Z. I hate... I don't don't you I care. No, not you, here. Not now. You can't We need them. all the Gen Z we can get. You say you love them. Well, no. I, I'll get into this in a little while. Well, anyways, there's a bunch of videos of people being like, Freaky Friday's offensive. Freaky Friday's problematic. Why Freaky Friday is, <sighs> is, doesn't hold up? Because it's offensive. And I'm like... Because they're in a Chinese restaurant? Like, who, oh. what the fuck are you talking about? Everybody needs to shut up. Freaky Friday's a genius movie. And um, I love that there was a Chinese restaurant involved. There's not enough. In I film. don't know the storyline, so I can't confirm or deny what you're talking about. A fortune about. cookie. A they fortune, a fortune cookie. cookie. And that's the thing that, that's like the talisman that transfers them for, through bodies. And until they to have a full circle moment, they and can't return to each other's, to their rightful bodies. And does anyone so actually China save the day. Hmm? China save the day. <laughs> And does anyone actually care, or is it just like something interesting you can scroll on TikTok? I don't think anybody cares. I don't know. You just hate TikTok. No, it's the same thing. They did the same thing to Taylor Swift recently. What did they do to Taylor Swift? I mean, I don't know if Shane wants to be involved in our drama sessions. Uh, I'm fine. But so when she stepped on the scale in the anti-hero music video, it says fat. Mm -hmm. And there was all of this outrage because she's so skinny. And when she stepped on the scale, what she read was fat. So right, people but got skinny people have body dysmorphia. Yeah, you're preaching to the choir, but that doesn't mean she didn't get canceled about it. And that's what right. I mean. That's Everybody my problem needs to with allow TikTok. People to have feelings. And I guess, and I don't. You can't club all of Gen Z in together as one. Right. But I will say that they're the generation that has pushed forward TikTok, and I think because they're feeling big and mighty and able to. I don't know. She's a pop star. Yeah. She's probably had body issues her entire career yeah. because record, record executives, the public, everyone was saying you need to be skinny. And then she puts what she perceives her issues on yeah. the scale and she gets canceled. I don't know that she was canceled. Yeah. Because uh, I didn't even hear about didn't it. Didn't she sell like a bazillion CDs? Like nobody cares. Also, Taylor's That's the thing that's so funny, funny to me is like, okay, as somebody with so many eating disorders, <laughs> it's like, it's so funny to me how normies, I call them normies, like Ryland people who don't have eating disorders, how normies are always so shook when like a celebrity's like, I have an eating disorder. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, no duh. No, no duh. Everybody yeah. in LA, I would say for the most part. Have an eating disorder. It's hard. It's hard out in these streets. I think disordered yeah. eating can even be as complicated as I just overthink eating. That's literally it. I think it's if you think about food, there's a number, a certain number of times a day, then you technically have an eating disorder. I right. saw something online recently where like it's offensive for me to call myself an alcoholic now. And that's when I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Well, what do you mean? People but who have disordered drinking or something. A drunk. <sighs> No, you can not even that. It's like people oh. who abnormally consume psychotic amounts of alcohol and ruin their friends and family's lives and their own. What's it called now? I don't like you can Google it, but there's a non-offensive ter terminology for alcoholism. And it's like, I'm going to call it what it's called. I'm an alcoholic. And how are we all supposed to dance around what we don't well, fully know about that was made up by somebody who wanted to be mad for no reason? That's the thing. Because the, then it's like, it's also like saying like, oh, so being an alcoholic is offensive. If we're going to call this word triggering an offensive, it means the thing that it is is offensive. And I am not offended by the fact mm -hmm. that I am an alcoholic. Oh, I do have. Okay. I have an issue. This is on in the similar path with YouTube because. Okay. <laughs> I had to take out the word. Well, you can just bleep me because yeah. you demonetized. But I had to take out the word f from one of the Jeffrey videos because YouTube demonetized it. So I had to like take out the word f And it was Jeffrey saying it about himself. Right. And then I was thinking like, wait a minute. Isn't this kind of homophobic? Like to, to take away a gay person's right to say f
Like, Absolutely. Right? Like, weird like that. That's. But I was like, eh, who cares? I'm just going to take it out. But it was interesting. And then in one in a podcast we did, we had to take out a word. I'm not going to oh, say it. But <laughs> that's the equivalent in England, England or something. I don't. I, I feel like we need to have a revolution and we need to, you know, take back our word. Yeah. I mean, I've already been taking it back. I sling it out. <laughs> and Lizzie, and right. you can use it, too. Thank you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> <Don't say Just> <laughs> <kidding. laughs> do you have anything to say about our animal hoarding? What has it been like for you? No, because I do. I have mental breakdowns a lot about it. I mean, I love our animals, but I want to like, honestly know how much time you're spending in the morning feeding these motherfuckers a lot. My before I got to sit at my desk this morning, yeah. it was an hour because <gasps> I not only have all of the animals but now the cat isn't fully acclimated to the other animals right so i bring the dogs down and then i'm trying to do their routine and then i gotta somehow switch the cat up to a different room shane's already like rolling his eyes at me (laughs) what was the question (laughs) how do you feel about your animal hurting problem has it has it filled the heart the the hole in your heart has it cured the depression um i'm just used to having animals like I've always, in every stage of my life, I've had a bunch of animals. Yeah. I, lo- I love animals. I love the feeling of like, you're never alone. They're always there. They're not judging you. They love you. And I agree. The more the merrier until you have one in a cone and then a cat that you're trying to acclimate to the rest of them. And then my head kind of spirals in circles. And yeah. I'm like, I don't know how much more of this I can take. But my Rai Rai baby who's sleeping on my lap right now is approved to get By out the way, of the cone I don't today. want people to think that I'm the one who's just keep keeps on getting animals. The cat thing. Oh, that was the my cat fault. just that was you. came. That was you. Yeah, on accident. That's like everybody's story with a cat. I feel like everybody in America has a cat named Garbage. <laughs> oh, we just moved into this house and like the garbage cans, we got this fucking cat with it. <laughs> we named him Garbage. Mm-hmm. But ours came from an angel. <laughs> <laughs> ours is an angel reincarnation of another mm-hmm. angel garbage cat. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I guess the alpacas were my fault as well. Yes. So, so you're an animal hoarder too. I know. I'm so not Shane, how do you feel about it. his animal hoarding? Mm, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather. Uh, I feel like that isn't mm. one of our issues. What animal hoarding? I feel like we're we both agree on it. Oh, like we have other issues. What are those issues? Yeah. Let's unpack. I feel like every time I come on the podcast, that's it's just us talking about our issues. What else are we going to do? I think family therapy helps everyone else and relationships out there. I'm not um, a certified therapist, but I do enjoy making others' business my own. <laughs> okay, let me think. What was his problem? Wait, what did we fight about recently? Oof. You did tell me I needed to go to therapy. I did. Mm. Oof. I told him he needed to go to therapy when he started. I told Chris he needs a journal. (laughs) I've told, yeah, Chris, have you found a new therapist yet? (sighs) So that's a whole (laughs) thing. No, I really tried actually. Because Jared had a good, I'm trying to make it brief. Jared had a good idea on the podcast, Mm -hmm. on your podcast, about uh, looking through my like insurance. And and I like, I go through Kaiser. So I was like, oh, I'll I'll look through Kaiser. And I did. What a nightmare. I have Kaiser too. It is a nightmare. (laughs) And it ended up being like several, like, like at least a couple months of like filling out paperwork and answering calls and making appointments and going back and forth. And it was like such a tedious, long, insane process. And I had to like email photos of my ID and all this stuff. And then finally, when I got the appointment, uh, it was only virtual. They don't have any in-person therapists, which sucks for me because mm-hmm. I don't have the best Wi-Fi reception. So it was like oh. cutting in and out. And I'm like trying to have an appointment with the therapist. You're who, like, I need therapy about this therapy who, session. Who received none of the paperwork. So I had to fill it all out as I'm talking talking to him and he like was just like did you fill it out yet did you fill it out yet the whole time and it just got like really stressful and then he'd say something and i'm like i didn't hear you cut out again and it like and he just like then after i filled it out just asked re-asked me all the questions on the paperwork and then it was done and i was like that was so stressful and unhelpful and i'm like but let me try again and uh i missed the second appointment they were like oh since you missed the second appointment it's a 150 dollar fee for missing the appointment and i was like that's defeat the entire purpose of why i'm doing this it's to save money and it's been very unhelpful why'd you miss the appointment <laughs> um i had to for work did you cancel uh i i had to, I had last minute it was like a mm. thing where work needed me they didn't originally this but. would be a perfect segue for better help <laughs> Are they a sponsor? They've never sponsored me before. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I could really use that discount code. Wait, have they sponsored us? Some yes, therapy. they have. I think they have. No, no it, calm, calm, calm. No, now. no, no, no. It's one of the therapies. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know your sponsor. We use calm. Oh my God. That's what? not therapy. Wait, okay, wait, Chris. Hold, hold that thought because I have thoughts um, for you. But before I get to that, uh, 
Wait, can we say this or no? What? I don't know. I can't read your mind. <laughs> say it. It's years ago, you did a brand deal for it. Oh, yeah. Go for it. I don't know what Are you're talking you sure? about. What is it? So he he did a brand deal for, this is a long time ago, for some therapy app or something. Um, and he, he like showed me the video. He's like, tell me if any of this is boring. So I start watching the video and it starts with an ad and it's like, you know, this app is a therapy app and blah, blah, blah. And then it like, he says like, it changed my life. And he's like saying all these, like, it was the best thing I've ever done for myself. And I can't even imagine that. And I was like, what the, you've never even, you don't have that app. You've never even been to therapy. Dude, he does this to me all the time. I'm like, wow. So you really fuck with that? And he goes, oh, sorry. <laughs> But you took it out. You took it out. I was like, you cannot say that. No, I don't. I don't not use the products that we use, but sometimes I will oversell a little bit. And mm -hmm. then that's when Lizzie will be like, what? And I'm like, oh, and you did the same. But to it's me only too. because you trick me. You know what, what I mean? I'm mean? like, oh, I need that. That sounds great. And he likes it. You and he's do like, need I've it. never even smelled it. And I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I just bought 10. <laughs> this is going to be a moment if you guys are dragging me in a bad way. Oh, are we? <laughs> yes. I can already envision what's going to happen be as a result of this. One of my favorite books on writing is by a woman named Anne Lamont. And it says, if people don't want you to talk about what they did, they shouldn't do it. <laughs> Well, if you I'm don't want ads Ow. on this podcast, then you shouldn't be slandering Ryland the ads on Ryland loves every podcast. product we have ever. <laughs> loves therapy. <laughs> loves therapy. Hey, no, I I tried. I really did try. And I don't I don't want to. I don't know. It no, just, you loved therapy when you did it. I, I guess for the time being, I was going through something like very specific. So right. it helped for that. But then when I got into like regular life after the hurdle i didn't really know where to start and she didn't really have any helps help in prompting it and shane his thing would be like bring up and i'm like bring up what i don't know well okay before we let me go jump back into this chapter chris i'm proud of you for trying to do therapy <laughs> Thank you. let's try again <laughs> yeah, you can't just give up after your first try well no i did i mean as you know i had a therapist before that an in-person mm -hmm. therapist that i went to for a long time mm -hmm. who was amazing and by the way i was going to say when you were saying that i've been to therapists a lot in my life and a, a lot of them were just very unhelpful until i found one that i clicked with that changed my life and like saved my life right so i would like if the one you went to wasn't helping i'd strongly encourage to like try to find one that clicks mm -hmm. with you because that's really important and i think that's the issue i have with a lot of aspects of my life like I would love to find an editor too but going through the process of finding that right editor seems worse than actually doing it, it or is. like I could do seven scenarios like that in my life currently see yeah. I totally get that but I also think at the end of the day when it comes to like mental health you can get bogged down in the like oh but that's a nightmare starting the process is a nightmare but it's like it's always going to be a nightmare until you just fucking start it yeah. And then the second you started, it's like unraveling but a knot. But therapy like eventually specifically, the like well, you're unboxing so much. And then if it's not a fit, then it's starting over really does feel like a, ugh. Well, okay, here's my, and I think this is what you were trying to, you started getting at. The reason I brought up therapy to you is because you are not like a typical damaged, mentally ill person, <laughs> such as the rest of the people in this room. And specifically Riley. <laughs> oh, very specifically This bitch Riley. is sick and twisted. Yeah. She's so sweet and sleeping. <laughs> Gosh, we should have lowered the angle. Oh, I'm not you. The You're standard. not mentally ill. Sorry. When you said lower the angle, it like triggered me because it's my nightmare. Um, <laughs> no, so you, you don't have like a bunch of trauma and a bunch of past, like all that stuff, right? But you do have issues in the present day that you don't know are issues because nobody around you is telling you it's an issue. And then I come along and say, hey, I think this is an issue. And how would I bring that up to my therapist if I don't know that it's an issue? Exactly. Which is what I'm telling you. So now here. So your issue um, is because we talked enough about mine. Your issue is you have a very big temper. I do have. A you temper. have a lot of rage and it's very fast. <laughs> it comes out of nowhere. Um and, and yeah, you can't take any sort of criticism. You turn into a fight. I think I've gotten better on the criticism. <laughs> I think with criticism, I've gotten better. But I am very strong-willed. No, I am. You don't think so? No. Really? No. What do you mean? Is this a test? <laughs> Are you testing it right now? Because I am triggered. And I would say, I know the traits that you mean, but I will also say I've come such a long way since dating you. Like, I really was a monster, maybe, when I met you. Wait, really? What? I would say in terms of, like, 
I think you brought me a long way in like my emotional journey, my emotional availability. You don't think so? No, I'm just kidding. No, you have. I think you've changed. Like you stopped me in a life path. And like helped redirect me in a way for the positive, I think, to be more generous, to be more open, to be more emotionally available, to change my priorities. Yeah. And maybe I, yes. And you changed me too. So I don't want to sound one-sided and I would be dead without you. But what I will say. He always says that. Is, oh my God, I would. Are you kidding? Imagine. <laughs> Imagine what? Imagine me Him without alone. You. How about Shane the other night talking about if he ever died that he wants me to date again? Yeah, I don't I'm like, why are you telling me this? What prompted that? We were watching a movie about it. So you don't really love him. Exactly. What? If you're not haunting what? him from beyond, <laughs> that's not real love. Well, no, I told him. Mm. I was like, I never want you. Oh, my God. It was a fucking Lindsay Lohan movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, my God. It? That scene of her with a horse. Okay. Um, <laughs> you guys know. <laughs> that's me with my alpacas. Um, <laughs> I'm a horse. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did see that scene. I'm going to go train, get some firewood right now that she eats shit <laughs> i love oh, she was so good in parent in uh freaky friday anyways your rage so i think that's the thing is yes you've changed so much as far as being generous and like being less like narcissistic or whatever not narcissist but you know like the traits. yes the traits yeah so you, you've done better with that but i think because of that i think you have all this rage brewing I mean, we haven't tapped into that. I wouldn't disagree. And I would say, no, I'm serious. That's why I started meditating. And I think meditation has brought me a long way. I also think I get frustrated when I haven't had time for me. And I feel like a lot of mornings recently, because our lives have been so chaotic with getting alpacas and then getting a cat and then having Riley get spayed or neutered or whatever it is for her gender. Um, I just like a lot of the mornings are me running around feeling like a chicken with my head cut off for an hour. And then I'm like, oh, I've got to finish all of this work. And then I don't have time to work out. And then I just like, I'm short fused. Mm. There's thing. And that is where I'm bad. If I don't okay. achieve what I want in my day, okay. I become very short fused. Okay. Uh, there was a day where I got up early for no reason. It was really weird. Mm -hmm. And I did all the things, right? Like I helped you and I fed the dogs and I did all those things. And but you still had a lot of anger that day the, so about I think, one specific thing. I think that's a cop out. No, that was like I think the rage comes from somewhere else, and I want to know where it is because your childhood was perfect. So where is it coming from? Hmm. 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 You know what I mean? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know because I do. Some days I'm just on edge, and you get the brunt of it because I guess you're here. You're here, yeah. And I think I because my husband says the same thing. He's like, I get the nastiest side of you, and it's like you're goddamn right, you do. <laughs> and if you can't handle that, you don't get the rest of it either, bitch. And what will trigger you into a spiral like that? Oh, anything could. <laughs> it's literally anything. Because I'm that. That's probably why you and I are friends. Because I'm you're, I'm just sitting here I'm like, wow, that sounds a lot like me. <laughs> That's probably why I like him. But no, it can be as simple as like my friend James playing with the fucking center console in my car because it's broken. And I'll be like, don't fucking touch it. It's broken. <laughs> like, don't you think? Mm. I also and, think and I do dumb bitch shit all the time where it's like anyone in the world could be like, Lizzie, have you ever had a thought? <laughs> but when one person does one thing, it's like, put it together. Figure it out. And it's like, I don't know where that comes. Well, I do know where that comes from. <laughs> Some of my aggression that I find fun, though, like I am entertained by a little bit of it. I'm saying stems from, for example, playing Mafia or playing a game where it requires some. There's a part of me that also enjoys being feisty, a little bit aggressive and like getting under somebody's well, yeah. skin. That's why. Didn't we talk about this last time? You always start a fight before we have sex. Oh. <laughs> Every time oh. we'll literally be not like, like on real the way fights. it'll not be one of those things fights. where it's like we should probably do it right yeah and we're walking <laughs> up the stairs <laughs> and on the way to the stairs he'll be like well not so like you're just gonna leave those dishes in the fucking sink <laughs> and i'm like I'll, I'll do them and then that's we're, your dirty talk and then, you fucking weirdo and then he's looking for the lube or whatever and no. then he'll just he'll just be like he'll be like so like you know are we gonna watch a Lindsay Lohan movie tonight or not like just you know and I'm just like why are we doing this why are we doing this so I think your rage combined with your needing to be angry during intercourse there's something wrong bro it's like you, it's like maybe your parents were fighting and like to drown off you're just like beating it all like you're just I'm just like I can't hear it because everything 
everything else is great. Like, I don't know. Maybe that's Ooh. it. Chris agrees. No, I, no, no, no. I was <laughs> I only, Chris is like me too. No. <laughs> I only witnessed my parents fight once in my life. Oh, that's crazy. Well, yeah, I really only heard and then like walked down and saw one fight. So definitely what not What did it that. look like? Was it gnarly? It was over. Uh, yeah, I can picture it like. I can picture it like it was yesterday. It was over Christmas. My mom was mad because my dad was like cheaping out on something <laughs> and she wanted to do more or get more of something. And he was saying no. And so they were like having a brawl in the basement, hmm. but a bra- you need to be more specific. Yeah. <laughs> like were they, spread throwing, rumors. Was, were they throwing hands? That's what that sounded like. <laughs> no. Do you know what a brawl is? No, I guess not. <laughs> so they were having a heated, respectful they conversation. Were just, yeah. They were just doing what we do every day about, we do not really fight every shit. day. Well, you pick the fights and then Sometimes you like... my fights that I pick aren't real though. They're like fun. No, here's the thing. What he'll do is he'll start a fight that's fun, right? He'll just, you know, like, you hate me or like whatever. <laughs> and then I'll start joining in on the fight and then I'll start poking too. The second I poke back... He actually gets mad. And now it's a real fight. Ooh, depends. And then I'm like, you oh, started you're crazy. This. No, do, I'm not. But why do you is, no, fight? I'm not. Look at him not being able to take criticism. Do you like uh, makeup sex? Is that why you fight? Like, is that- No, he likes heated, no, he likes hot, angry, angry sex. Uh, yeah. Angry. Uh, I'm hmm. learning. Hmm. Yeah, like with your grinder hookups, did you like fight with them? <laughs> you should be like, well, this is really no, out of my fucking there's, way. <laughs> there's so much adrenaline that you don't, you didn't have to. It is. Oh, you know that's what it is. <laughs> He needs the adrenaline. Whoa. 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 We could have breakthrough. Therapy. Yeah. My rate just went up. (laughs) (laughs) That was a breakthrough. But what does that mean? What does that mean? You're right. Because it's never just like an in the moment, like, oh, like romantic. We love each other. There is an adrenaline something on your end. (laughs) Whether it's a fight, whether it's like a, you know, we're in a car. No, sometimes when you give me gifts. (laughs) Oh my god, this is not good for you. I know. Can you tell this story? Well, no, maybe don't. <laughs> he gets very excited There's when I give him presents. There's a lot of I do. Oh, I get that. Weird. Like excited, excited? I get. Yeah. That. Oh. Like, yeah. Like, I could get hard right now thinking about him giving me presents. Whoa. <laughs> that, wow. That just editing note, that, take that and put it somewhere. <laughs> At the beginning of the episode or on your Instagram somewhere. Okay. We don't edit that hard over here. <laughs> okay. Because okay. that's a that was a, a moment. Yeah. I pissed Joe off because like a like this is this is fucked up and Joe will hate that I shared it, so I'm gonna share it anyways. But sometimes like if, if we're like in like a loving moment, I will think to my like I always think about Starbucks and I can't not do it. Oh. And so afterwards oh sometimes gosh. I'm like so can we go get Starbucks now? And it's like I've been Pavlovianly conditioned to expect Starbucks after acts of love. <laughs> no, Joe knows. He'll like Joe knows. he'll even bribe Starbucks sometimes beforehand, won't he? Yeah. I bribe like thumbnails. Oh shit. I'll be like I'll be like, sometimes. oh, like, you know, if I it's not even sex though. If I need something, I'll just like throw in like, well, do you need help with the thumbnail? And I'll be like, oh fuck yeah, I do. And he'll be like <laughs> 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 What well, I had something to say. An Too apology? bad. <laughs> To all of us. No, and every you know single what? one of us. I know we like fight on this podcast, but I do think like other forms of media that we participate in doesn't show this element. Like, you know, so I think it's good to like highlight fights or things that we fight about or have. It's real. I think some fights are okay. Like, you know, as as a married woman. Sometimes I think to myself, like, is this fight worth having? And then it's like, if it's not, I'll get twice as mad at Joe oh. if he's the one who's picked it. I'll be like, this is a waste of all of our fucking time. Yes. <laughs> and then I can't handle it. Like, Joe the other day was trying to put the dishes away. And I was like, are you fucking broken? You're in here yelling at the dishwasher. You need to calm the fuck down. And it's like, girl, you were in another room. None of that was your business. And it's like, who's the problem now? Ryland. I am so excited because today's podcast is sponsored by Lomi and I've never been able to compost before because it always seemed way too complicated. And then I got a Lomi and Lomi allows me to turn my food scrapes into dirt with the push of a button. It's a countertop electric composter that turns scraps into dirt in under four hours. The best part is there's no smell when it runs and it's actually really quiet. It's so much better than putting my food scraps into the trash, which then stink up the entire kitchen. Now I can put my scraps 
traps into my Lomi, have it turn into dirt, be environmentally conscious. And thanks to Lomi, I have way less garbage each week. I went from probably five bags to two bags a week. The Lomi is super user friendly and I feel great knowing that I'm composting and creating soil instead of waste. I basically have a limitless supply of dirt now for my garden, which is incredible. It honestly blows your mind because you're setting it up and you're thinking there's no way this is going to work. You put your waste into the Lomi and pff, like magic soil appears. It's honestly incredible. So if you all want to start making a positive environmental impact or just make your dinner cleanup much easier, Lomi is perfect for you. Food waste is gross and Lomi is your solution. With the holidays right around the corner, Lomi will make the perfect gift for anyone on your shopping list. Head to Lomi.com sip and enter promo code sip to get $50 off your Lomi. That's $50 off when you head to lomi.com slash sip and use promo code sip at checkout. That's Lomi.com slash sip. We're back after that and sweet little break. All of us have taken a Xanax. We're warming up inside because it's freezing outside. Mm. Oh, and talk about freezing outside. Lizzie was dead set, sold on doing an episode outside after the sun had set. What is this voice? I'm sorry. What? Isn't that nasty? It's the way he talks to me on the podcast. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's crazy, right? You're doing your like entertainment voice. Yeah. Uh, are you? But it's like, I will Lizzie not. Lizzie I already get enough from set. this This, Lizzie. De this <laughs> dumb bitch was dead set. Lizzie Gordon. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, to keep doing it. Wait, do, tell your story in that yeah. voice. Okay. Three, two, Elizabeth oh, okay. Gordon. <laughs> That's no. how you do. Three, two, so welcome the back. editors know. Oh, I'm sorry. You guys aren't professionals at all. I mean, <laughs> three, two, Elizabeth Gordon came to Colorado and while filming upcoming, whoa, upcoming You're episodes of the. <laughs> No, um, she was literally saying, we got to do an episode outside in front of the Christmas lights. And I said, have you been outside at night? I brought a jacket. That's what you said, but go <laughs> outside. No, you I went outside and I thought it was great. I thought it was nice it was outside. Great. I was like, ooh, so crisp, so <laughs> nice. Mm, mm, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> While you're dragging me so much, don't you think we should drag you a little bit? Ooh. I can't be the Feel bad like guy I've got always. enough. Where are we going to drag him? <laughs> <laughs> Where's he going? Yeah, how are you going to do that? Well, what are aspects of the, our relationship that are your problem in? What am I a problem? Mm -hmm. Oh. Ooh. You're Ooh. not perfect. Here's, I'm not You're saying, a great boyfriend. I'm not saying but... I'm not. Here's what I'm saying, though. A few years ago, when you told me that I needed to get therapy because you didn't know how to deal with my issues, right. I went to therapy, and I feel like I fixed most, most of them. Um, so yeah, I'm just expecting the same return. But anyways, uh, what are my, <laughs> what are my current issues? Um, you get mad if I call you out on something. No, it's the way you do it. So here, and here's an example. If he wants me to do the dishes, I keep using dishes as an example, but if he wants me to do the dishes, instead of saying, Hey, it would really help me. Can you do the dishes? I'd be like, Oh my God. Yes. But instead he'll go. He'll like say to Riley, is dad going to do the dishes? <laughs> or he'll, or he'll be like, so you get, so are you going to go do the dishes? And blah. Like, it's like weird. You're sick. You're a sick twisted You cannot act like I'm sick here. I can. You've done crazier things. No. Yes. No. Every day I'm My sure. My husband's not here to attest to it. I've gotten better. I will say because, no, when we got yeah. Riley, adding the third dog mm -hmm. was difficult while she was really in her puppy stages. Mm -hmm. And I, because I'm up in the morning time and you did come up with solutions you were like well let her just get on my schedule and then i'll deal with but i was like the other dogs are already on my it just wouldn't work so mm. it i got better at instead of being passive aggressive when going to bed asking you to take out the dogs like in a weird way now i would just be direct and say hey can you take out the dogs while i go get ready for bed yeah i think that's something that's hard because i have expectations and i feel like i can get caught up in my expectations and mm. then if my expectations aren't met by my husband he's in fucking trouble oh. but he also he can't read no. my mind because he's like but he useless. should be able to. He should be able just, to. He should be fucking able to. I didn't marry a man who doesn't fucking read my mind. Well, Thank you. You're speaking to yourself <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> she's me in the relationship. No, but I think I like everybody has that same thing in a relationship. It's not there's not just one person with expectations. Everybody has expectations. Well, I the think the problem is articulating that to your partner because if you're passive aggressively pissed that someone's not doing something that you haven't asked them to do that they're not aware of doing, it's not fair. I agree. And our lives, the things that we do naturally are just very different yeah. from one another. Like n neither of us are less helpful, but it's just in different regards. So sometimes I feel like I'm not getting enough of what I want help with. I just love Chris's little looks to me because I don't know if it's to check my camera or if it's like 
he like gives me these little looks like I'm on your side. <laughs> Chris is and like, then, I'd never do that to you, baby. And I give him a look back like, I don't know, thanks. Well, I'm on your side. I mean, I will say, like we've talked about this on your podcast. Like, I, I don't know if it's a cancer thing. I don't know what it is. But like, we're both like kind of like emotional and similar mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. And like, whenever you say something, you're like, oh, yeah, that's me in the relationship. Sometimes you say things. And I'm like, Thank that's you. me, too. <laughs> Thank you. So mm-hmm. just relate. That's all. Mm-hmm. Well, good luck to both of you. Put it back <laughs> on mute. <laughs> I'd say overall, you're a great boyfriend. I rate you 10 out of 10. Oh my God. He recommends you all the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd recommend you to anyone after me. Would you ever? Yeah, of no. course. Well, what do you mean? You, he can't fall in love with anyone ever again. If I ever, God forbid, something were to go wrong. You'd want course. him to date again? Yes, I want him to find wow. love. Wow, see, that'll never work for me. I feel like, <laughs> I, like if I die and Joe moves on, I want all of you to say something fucked up to him because that is fucked up. You're mean. That's awful. No, it's not. He's got to live on this planet. What he about my memory? Person. He does not need a person that's not uh, me. <laughs> that is not happening. Okay. I real what? <laughs> oh, I was just thinking because you, but while we were taking a pee break, Lizzie brought up uh, something about her husband snoring. And then I had oh, something to yeah. add on to that. So Joe scream snores and won't wake up. And he also like you. So this is similar. Joe will come to bed late as fuck. And I'm like, Rylan, I go to sleep when the sun goes down. It's like, well, well, I'm done. And I like fade into a little puddle in the bed. And he'll come in at like four o'clock in the morning, blow his nose like a fucking steamboat horn. He couldn't do that outside? That's what I'm trying to say. How fucking dare you? You come in at four o'clock in the morning and blow your nose as hard as you can in our bathroom that's in our bedroom. What in the fuck are you thinking? So I woke up last... I, I wake up every night he does it. I wake up every fucking night. And then I just sit there stewing in rage for 45 minutes trying to go back to sleep. But I'm not allowed to listen to a podcast or anything to like infiltrate my brain thoughts. So I'm just spiraling in this rage awake for hours thinking, why would you do that? Why would you come in? And it's like... Eah! Like that's the sound of the fucking nose blow. So yeah. you want a divorce and he can't date He's anyone dead after to you. Me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You do the same thing, but with your phone flashlight, it drives <laughs> me bonkers. Like there's nothing in this world that makes me more upset. I'll fall because, okay, I have two problems. Okay. You come to bed really early. There's this thing. My body has a clock. If Shane's not in bed by 5 a.m., you're out. I wake up. And then if I look over and he's not there, then I start worrying. And then I can't go back to sleep. Worry. And then I have what to, does yeah. that mean? You think I'm dead down here? I don't know. <laughs> I always think Joseph, do. I'm like, he's fucking dead. The dogs are eating do. him. And then I'm pissed off at you because you're not in bed and mm-hmm. it's your fault because I am awake. I know, like, it's it sounds crazy, but yeah. it makes me mad because then it disrupts my sleep. And I'm like, just well, be in bed by 5 a.m. And that, and then, then Joe comes in and he faces me and scream snores. And he'll come in with his flashlight and he's like, well, it's dark. And I was like, well, then put the flashlight away from anyone's face, like at your side, pointing down. There's enough light for you to get to bed. Just get in it. I do. No, you don't. I do. Then why do I have to pull the covers over my eyes? Because you're dramatic. No, I'm not dramatic. And you're not sensitive to light. Anyways, so... He uh, he always gets mad at me for snoring. And then he's like, I don't snore. I don't snore. Well, yesterday he started snoring, so I filmed it. <gasps> I'm going to need to see the video with this. Is this me? Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Oh, my God. That is so funny. Joe, whenever I wake up, I'm like, well, you were snoring. And I scream, Joe, and I'm shaking your fucking body. And you don't wake up. Because I'm literally like, Joe. Joe! God damn it! My Joe. dog's sleeping. Sorry, but I, that's how violently I'm shaking this motherfucker and nothing changes. It's crazy. Mm. But he's always like, prove it. So I pull, I've recorded it the other day and I played it for him. He goes, huh. I honestly can't believe that was me. I feel like you dubbed it. <laughs> He, I know that Foley you're a great, snores. he's a great editor. He's put that into Final Cut Pro. <laughs> I do he's feel emotionally manipulated by that edit. <laughs> yeah. I have to say. Uh, yeah, thank you, Lizzie. Chris? Am I the only one who thinks it's cute when my boyfriend's You're snores? Sick. And You're sick. You're fucked up. You need to find a codependent meeting <laughs> yesterday. I sleep better when he's there snoring. When okay. he snores? It's like yeah. a sleep machine for you? Yeah. <laughs> There's no photo evidence. It's fake news. Because our room's dark as fuck. Put a flash on this motherfucker. Oh, that's you. That's Joe. Or, yeah, that's yeah. wow. <laughs> and that's it on a mild night. That's mild. <laughs> okay, yeah. I've had enough of that. I've had enough of that. <laughs> um. Okay, Chris. So... Does your boyfriend try to fight with you for fun? Like, what's do you relate to any of that? I mean, he never picks small fights. 
I think like playfully sometimes, like never, not like a but it real fight. But. Uh, well, no, my fights don't, aren't meaning to be real, but then it will yeah. st- strike a chord, and then sometimes it will become real. Mm. That has happened, but yeah, I mean that we ha- do like say playfully mean things sometimes. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. But I was I relate to that. I mean, I felt justifiable in my like quick rage the other day. I don't know if we should get into our fight, but sorry, I just also wanted to tack onto this. Like, we don't have like violent sex i don't want you guys no. to think that, that like your parents watch this like we're not i'm not we're, <laughs> we're not, not beating the shit i'm not out beating of the shit out of you and like you know no we're not doing that no i mean if you want to let me know but we're not doing that <laughs> listen it's all fun and games until somebody tells me to relax whatever we'll we'll move on what okay you put in the document that i guess jennifer lopez is taking ben affleck's last name yeah and she's Saying she's going to still publicly be known as Jennifer Lopez, yeah. but it's the r- right thing to do romantically we, to yeah. take. So she's going to be Jennifer Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I doubt she'll say it like that. So the question is, there's multiple parts to this. Did you take Joe's last name legally? Um, No, but physically. <laughs> I carry it with me. It's you a, tattoo, you branded it. It's a great it burden. Yeah, I branded it. My girl's a lawyer. That would be okay. cute. Um, and what are we going to do? Well, my last name's fake. And that's what <laughs> so that's why it's a multi hyphenate. Like your last name's fake, so I'm not taking it. So are you uh-huh. taking my name? No. And then what name will the baby take? Because our baby's not taking oh, a fake last name. Oh, what's the baby's name. last name? That's a big deal. <laughs> Wait, why no? Why don't you want a name? No, it's a fake last name. My name? No, he's not carry. Our baby isn't carrying on Dawson because no, there's no, no. no family ties. I think I misunderstood. He's no, talking about your saying. name, bro. Uh, oh, I'm and I. My rage is at Shane, not you. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's asking why am I not Shane Adams now or Shane Dawson Adams? Yeah. Um, because Adams Dawson sounds better. Shane, Shane Adams, Adams Dawson. But then that's sad. Shane Adams <laughs> doesn't ring. I don't think. Shane Dawson. You could Adams. be Shane Adam Dawson. I guess I just don't care about it ryan yaw like i'm not like i've never sat there and been like oh, what well, like what what is my last name gonna sound like in this like i don't care just like you've never done about a wedding no can i throw you guys a wedding <laughs> she keeps saying that she'll just throw like she'll plan everything we don't even have to know just and show then up. we'll just show up here's the thing yeah we we do and we're not gonna talk about this because people are so annoyed by hearing about this no but, that's yeah. all the questions yeah. on the q a is oh. when are you finally gonna marry me? <laughs> i feel like you guys have it's, so many legally binding contracts between the two of you already that you're fucking married yeah but it's not my fault what <laughs> you're inseparable no i'm just kidding <laughs> no i would marry you you just every time we go to the planning phase you're not like Ooh. but you, you keep shining that light in his face while he's sleeping there's a lot of like awkward family weird things i don't like attention i mean it is weird it's like how do we i want everybody to be happy and have fun and, and not feel awkward. ultimately the day's about us not everyone else yeah. is what i think but we gotta figure it out before we i know we've done this conversation so many times but we do have to figure it out before we have kids i mean also, i always thought it would be cute to have our baby involved in the wedding we can get we can cute. get legally married before if you if you need that i mean but i think it would be cute and also like i feel like once we have a kid all the other stuff isn't going to matter anymore to me. I'm not going to care. I think you guys are already spiritually married. I don't think you care now about the actual physical wedding. Not no, being married to I mean, me, but about the, the actual... drama. Yeah. Like oh. when you have a kid, you stop caring about like, is this person going to be mad at this person? Is this person going to like this? Because when you have a kid, it's like, everybody shut the fuck up. This is my baby and I'm protecting him mm. or her or that. Preach. So I don't know. All right. Well, do we want to jump into the Instagram questions or do you want to revisit what we said we were going to do last year on the podcast and see if we accomplished it? What'd we do? What'd we do? What are you talking about? We talked about what we wanted to accomplish this year. I haven't felt uh, Chris yet. Uh, <laughs> there's still time. Lizzie. Right. Okay. Lizzie. On this podcast 10 months ago, you said you wanted to go to Japan this year. Oh, I did. <laughs> specific. Very specific. Yeah, I what was going to take that to Japan. Japan wouldn't let me in. I was talking to it. It's not personal. They weren't letting a lot of people in. <laughs> They've just reopened travel to China, to Japan. But I was tra- I was going through a, an agent and she said they're not doing any Japan travel. So now is not the time to book. And then I completely forgot. Paris Hilton goes there like every week. Yeah. I mean, am I? For Paris fragrance. Hilton? No, I'm not Paris Hilton. God damn it. Might be different when you're flying in private. Probably. Um, okay. You said you wanted to work out five days a week. I'm doing it. Really? Like four to five. Sometimes I take a week off. That's intense. I try to do four, but five is a lot. It makes me happy. Okay. 
Yeah. Who? What? Are, I was trying to make him clap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Um, participate more in my sobriety. You said you were currently fast mm. and loose. Yeah. No, I am participating more in my sobriety. Oh. I go to a lot more meetings. And then um, you said that we wanted to do our Christmas movie. I wrote a script. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I read it. I loved it. Really good. I loved it. And Shane gave Lizzie like, well, you asked for his. Very, yeah. I walked into what felt like a serious conversation. I was like, oh, wow. It was I'll leave session. you two yeah. alone. But no, but you're acting like I, was be- I wasn't being mean. No, no. you were. No, you're. I would want your input and that's why lizzie actually wanted you to read it and yeah. give your input as well and lizzie was laughing out loud at your suggestions to for tweaks they kill me yeah i feel like literally we, i feel like we have very similar uh, comedy writing yeah i think that you and i have a lot of very similar interests and we illnesses yes very very <laughs> like a lot of analogous illnesses mm-hmm. we both really like this person mm-hmm I am pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, yeah, we have, I think a lot of our sensibilities are very similar. Well, I hope this Christmas movie gets made. Dude, mm-hmm. me freeing too. Why don't we just make it? Do we need money? Yes. How much? <laughs> I mean, I think. The, if it's like a hundred or end, under, let's do it. Oh, it's not. <laughs> really? You yeah. You don't think we can make it for a hundred? I don't think we can make a good one for a hundred. Not in this economy. Mm-hmm. Shane's pretty crafty with sets. Like he did. Well, I think, yeah, I think we just take it there. Like we use a Christmas village as, as the overhead (laughs) shots of the city. (laughs) That's literally the first thing I thought when I was watching his vlogmas. I was like, this works as an exterior. And I think as long as it's really funny, you can get away with some of the production mishaps. Yeah. And I think we could get a lot of things for free, but like as a person who's done a lot of like scrappy filmmaking, like Mm. this is a fucking nightmare. And as a person whose dream it is to be an actor, I want that set life experience. Why don't you guys do GoFundMe? Well, first we're going to pitch it around and yeah. see if uh, anyone will take it. If yeah. no one will take it, then we'll go into how are we going to make this on our or own. Or why don't you do a GoFundMe to get the hype going? And then once you get a bunch of GoFundMes, hopefully sippers out there, then you can go to these places and be like, yeah, we don't fucking need you. And then they'll want you more. Well, you know what? I think then we, we got to run a GoFundMe campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever done that? No. It's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> Just so, drop your Venmo. <laughs> mine was. He won't let me. I've been asking for two years. <laughs> it's so tacky. Well, it's not tacky for some people. For you, it would be tacky. Rude. You're fine. That's what he says about everything I do. <laughs> uh, for me, well, Shane said for me, find you an editor. Mm. And <laughs> that was mean. Well, no, I'm laughing because you haven't found one. But then I see what you're about to say. You are the the one. I am the editor. And you, you're amazing. I'm the editor now. Yeah, I, I think this entire year I've edited my vlogs. Yeah, and you're so good. I watched your Christmas vlog yesterday and I was like, or the day before, and I was so excited and I was like, oh my God. He's like, it's so nice that I don't have to edit these. Yes. <laughs> it was a good one too. It was really good. But you know how nice it was when and I, I didn't edit And I have to say them? that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, she texted me, which is like a frequent comment, and I think she was genuine about it. She was like, I smiled through the whole thing. Aww. And I was like, oh, I did. It well. warmed my little heart. No, it was one of my favorite vlogs that we've made in a long time. It was just cute and full of Christmas spirit. Um, so I am still looking <laughs> for an editor. So it was. No, I liked it. <laughs> I know, just the way you said it. Okay. Christmas spirit. I said anyway. stay consistent, <laughs> which I think I did. I still posted a lot of vlogs this year, a yes. lot of podcasts this year. I really did stay on it. Mm-hmm. What I didn't accomplish is what I set out to do is a live show. There's still time. I don't bro. know if it's ever in our future. Why? Let's do it. Stop being such a pussy. <laughs> the Parker Pl- Pace Center. Yeah, let's go. Well, why don't we're going back to LA for a while? Why don't we do one in LA? Isn't LA the hardest place to sell? Yeah. So let's do it in Parker, where hopefully people will show up. Yeah, Parker loves you guys. <laughs> it's honestly like being here. It's like, am I like with? A fucking group of astronauts returning from space. <laughs> it's like we pull up somewhere and everyone's like, thank you for your service. Welcome back. It's, it's so crazy. Being a YouTuber. <laughs> um, okay. And then, yep, those were my things. Shane, you didn't really give us anything. You just said, I'm looking most forward to this moment in the present. I didn't say that. You did. W- jokingly. Because oh. I kept trying to circle back to your resolutions and you didn't really give us anything. Well, so. no. I think I said that I wanted to make stuff. Right? 
You made a lot of stuff this year. You did make a lot of stuff I this year. I said that. You made your podcast. You made a whole series. Your I, whole last series is out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. I've been trying to get an unlisted link, even though it's out tomorrow, but I need to fucking see that shit. Do you know that my whole world shuts down until that shit comes out? And it is a mind fuck that she it comes out at 2 p.m. for a person like me. Oh, <laughs> the last better time? For me, instantly, right oh. now. <laughs> <laughs> she literally last week canceled the dentist appointment because you were during the time that she had I swear to God. <laughs> It's because I think it's part of my like ADHD where it's like, no, I've got something to do at 2 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, what do you have to do? It's like, well, Shane Dawson's releasing part two. <laughs> and part three is some of your best work. I really, I do think. Yeah, rub it in because he's wow. seen it. Yeah. Chris and I wouldn't know. I see them all. Wow. In real time. Wow. The perks. I wonder if I could even handle that though. <laughs> What? I don't know. Like I could, I could combust. Like when you were working on your first palette, I think we went out to lunch one day, and he like said the name of it, and I was like, I can't know that. Oh, that's no. too much for me to know. And it's like, I'm, there's no one in my immediate vicinity who I could say that to who would be like, I'm off to tell. And, but it's like I can't stand knowing a secret like that. <laughs> like yesterday, I did a work exchange for my storyboards because it doesn't matter. I had to sit somewhere while someone like these guys live painted me for like five hours. Were and you I naked? Can't, no, fuck no. I'm wearing a sweater and I'm like watching Netflix on my phone. I'll show you the pictures. <laughs> I look like I'm on drugs. But anyway, the, I go like, oh, what he's like. I, I was like, what do you do for a living? He goes, I'm a ghost painter. I was like, huh? So he paints something and then another man puts his name on it and then sells it. Oh. And I was like, I can't handle knowing that. <laughs> like, I can't handle knowing that there's a man who has a secret that dark right now in this world. But I also need to know who the fuck he is like right now. And he's Whoa. like, I can't tell you. And I was like, I'm going to die sitting here and even knowing that this exists. I, that is nuts. I get that way about specific things. Like if I find something out that is like weird that nobody else would care about. I like feel like I have to tell somebody. Oh, yeah. I know a couple of them right now. Yeah. We never will. We'll go to our grave with it. I, I want to like right now all I'm thinking of are like all those little things that were kind of secrets and like I got one a couple years ago and like the running joke is like I would just text my other friends like should I tell so-and-so I know this secret because it was like about someone that we all know in common my problem is when it's more general and it feels like a scam you want to like do it just to the world but you can't like take the karma of actually right. outing the thing right. itself. All I, I want to out all the things. It eats me inside. It kills me. Mm. Like right now I'm like, don't say it. Hold it back. Hold it back. You know, something I found that was a weird, uh, I guess, superstition about myself the other day because Shane called it out. What? When the air conditioning, he, I was pushing it down and it was at 66 and I was like, no, you psychopath. We can't have the air at 66. Oh yeah. Your numbers thing. Yeah. There's That's your no, OCD. there's no world in which I could ever have a heater or air conditioning at 66. I would feel like I'm going to die. What do you need it at? 64? No, just not 60, 64 or 67. Oh, what's, and what's wrong with 66? Too close to 666. You, what, what are you going to do when you are 66? Oh, it's no. over. <laughs> no. That's when you get a new boyfriend. Oh, Oh. Nobody else does that. It's like it's why there isn't thirteen floors in buildings. It's like thirteen isn't that That's unlucky. Very specific, but it's though. not because it's it's everywhere but there's but, actually a 13th floor yeah, we just we're don't just call calling it the yeah. 13th floor but see that's floor. like completely mainstream so i don't yeah. think the air conditioning should be any different i don't think it should be there quite frankly this is a slippery slope what are you talking about <laughs> i mean like if it's you're like, acting like i'm gen z right now <laughs> i mean you're acting like you're gen z I right now i feel like i'm watching a gen z tiktok <laughs> <laughs> okay guys do you ever not go to 66 <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Um, New Year's resolutions or our Instagram Q&A? Okay, bring out the questions. Bring out the questions. Yeah, we should do the New Year's resolutions way later, bro. Okay, bro. I love that some of them you crossed out. <laughs> That's so mean. Somebody just had more stuff on gay culture. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Ryland crossed, I crossed it, it out. out. Yeah, because it's like, oh, you're not. You didn't cross that one out. It oh, more it. stuff on gay, gay culture. culture. What does that mean? I don't know. Maybe that we don't talk enough about it. What, oh, no, what's I think we're represented. Hot take. I think gay guys are really represented. Oh my god, don't get me start. Well, I don't want to I don't want to offend a movie. Okay. <laughs> it's bros. Uh, it was awful. Don't that's <laughs> I'm not saying it on your behalf. I'm saying it on my behalf. I paid for it. I supported the gay community. I, I just thought it was it. awful. It flopped. If Chris is saying that, who is like so excited about it, it's bad. I know, but so many people work on the movie, so I feel bad saying that. Okay, you're right. I think um, they're afraid to give gay people notes, but it's like they shouldn't be. They should get a gay executive and like have them tear it apart. Um. Okay. Somebody said. Okay. 
How did oh oh okay? How did Jeffrey's announcement of quitting YouTube affect you guys? Uh, don't don't quit. Millennials still watch. <laughs> um, how did it affect me? I just more felt well in that moment. So we were we didn't have a plan. Chris came over. We were filming random dumb shit all day, and then I was like, oh, I have this palette. That would be fun to show, but like whatever. So then, yeah, ask Jeffrey and then he's like, you should come here, blah, blah, blah. Then later that night is when he FaceTimed me and was like, yeah, I'm quitting YouTube. Should I say it in the series? And I was like, I like thought I was going to throw up. And then I, I was like, Chris, grab a camera. Let's just start filming. So all that was real, but it only affected me. And like, I feel sad that YouTube is kind of feeling like maybe the way that like TV felt when the internet came kind of like, oh, wait, we're still over here. I feel like YouTube is that because everybody's watching TikTok and this and that. And I am unable to get into that stuff. For some reason, my brain just doesn't care about TikTok or that stuff. So, yeah, it is a little sad. Um, but I don't think I'll ever leave because where else would I post an hour long thing? Not that you have creative control over. Yeah. I, I had somebody in our life come up to me today and say, do you really think YouTube is dying? And I was like, who said that? Well, CC. Oh, and she was like, yeah, I was watching Shane's second episode and I thought all I watch is YouTube. Like I listen to podcasts all day. I like sitting down and watching something that's long form. I hope you guys never leave doing YouTube because it's something that like you can sit down and enjoy where you don't get other places. And I was like, well, I don't think people are going to fully leave YouTube. I just think it's not what it once was. And you can, yes, say like somebody got less popular, but there's also TikTok that went boom. And I don't think the younger generations that were previously coming, because I think for you, for example, as you were growing up, I think you would capture the younger generation and they would add on to your audience. Whereas mm -hmm. now I think that younger generation is going to TikTok. Mm -hmm. You're maintaining the older audience. I see for my analytics, like when I first started YouTube, it, I did have that 17 to 20, whatever range. Mm -hmm. And now my whole range is 25 to, 30, to 30, 35. Yeah. And then my second is the 35 to 45. And so I don't think the younger people are coming to YouTube. And then I just think because of that, a lot of creators create differently and on the other platforms, <laughs> Um, so it is sad, but I still love YouTube as well. I mean, I've just, I've, I've come to just appreciate the audience that's there. Like, yeah, I'm not getting 20 million views anymore, but the people that are still there, the couple million, few million, whatever, they're so nice and so excited about it and they watch it. Like I'll look and like, I'll look at the retention, I'll, like they watch it. They actually care. And I'm like, okay, I'd rather make stuff for people who are excited and invested than 30 million people where most of them either are hate watching or they're watching because it's popular or, you know, whatever. And like, what's more interesting to like, well, for me, I feel my content is better than it's ever been. I feel like I care more about it. And I feel like when I was doing really well on YouTube, like that was very fun and exciting, but I wasn't as fulfilled making the videos you were as I am now. Yes. Oh I felt like God. I was on a treadmill and because it was like concept videos, mm -hmm. I was always chasing what's the concept for this week. What's the concept. And now I film moments in our life that gener genuinely mean something to me. And I love like the audience that's there that enjoys watching that. But I do think it's sad that Jeffrey, but he doesn't create in the way that you create. Like he, he's a creative, but I think he puts that energy into his business, like cosmetics business more than like editing a video. Mm -hmm. And he's just not getting that fulfillment. I did mm. love Jeffrey's concept content though. Oh, that's he's... one of the big creators that I genuinely miss watching. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. I mean, yeah. and that's the thing. And that's why I was trying to, I was hoping the series would end with him changing his mind. Like I had a whole idea for the ending and like whatever, and it didn't happen. And, um, but yeah, I mean, he's doing his thing on TikTok, and he figured out a new thing that he enjoys doing on TikTok, which is working because I don't think he enjoyed doing the trends. So now he's just doing shorter versions of his makeup tutorials and they're doing really well. So yeah, um, but yeah, I just can't think in short. Like I can't think in minute long. Like I have. I just did a thirty minute spot, and I'm like, this is hard. How about my snapping at you? Oh, Shane was like, that's it. That's the beginning of his. <laughs> I <range."> said, yeah, because <laughs> during the break, Riley yelled at us. Well, no, I yelled at Lizzie because well, she's driving me nuts. <laughs> no, you directed it at all of us. 
No, I didn't. I'll explain what happened. Whoa, we I could all take it. Listen, <laughs> Shane's camera died and ran out of memory. I couldn't find another memory card, so I had to import footage, and then my computer was full. And the and only then I way you can do all that is to be nasty to no. Lizzie. And the whole time I'm running around the whole house mm -hmm. trying to get this mm -hmm. podcast back up and running, Lizzie just keeps screaming. Did you leave all the windows open? Is it, cold? it is fucking negative 12 degrees in this motherfucker right now. It's 65 in here right That's now. That's too cold. It is not 65 <laughs> in here either, you fucking no, liar. 65 Your thermostat might be set to 65, it, no. but it is negative 12. Feel it my nose. Reads. It feels wet. And you wanted to record Feel my nose. in the 20 degree yeah. weather outside. Oh, I want a lot of things, but that doesn't mean they're good for me. And she wouldn't stop. And I said, I'm trying to get us back up and rolling. I'll turn off the fucking air, but shut up. No. Shut up. No, what you said exactly. Exactly what you said. He said, uh -oh. I Lizzie screamed, uh, what are you doing? Because it's been it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Waiting. A million things to get and the then, podcast back and up then and running. He yells, I'm doing a million things for us so that we can get the so that we can finish the podcast. So he directed it at us, right? And what I said to them was, This is it. See, here's the thing. He's running around doing a bunch of bullshit <laughs> that he didn't ask for help. We don't know what he's doing. And you guys couldn't even help probably anyways, because we don't even know what he's doing, right? Yeah. So it's like so then why is he directing it at everybody? And making us cold. No, I wouldn't have snapped at anyone Feel if Lizzie nice. wasn't screaming about the temperature. I was like, if you're fucking cold, get up and turn I'm, off I'm the air. I'm scared, but I would like to feel how warm your nose is if it's not this fucking cold. I'm hot. You might be sick. I'm not sick. I, I wouldn't. Like I'm getting sick. I wouldn't have snapped had also, she Also, all of us sat here and said we all probably have COVID. Well, okay, no, great. I did not say that. I Chris said, was like, I'm pretty sure it. I have COVID. I've been licking a lot of doorknobs in public. And we were like, you have? Chris. No. I was, you heard him say it. I was Chris. the only one double masked on the plane. Chris wears a mask everywhere. Double yeah, masked? he's safe. Double, double masked. masked. Oh. So what was your biggest takeaway from the series with Jeffrey? Uh, My biggest takeaway. Like what? Or It could be anything. What's your... What's your sentiment now, later? Oh, man. After the fact. Um, and I'm no spoilers. <laughs> Shut up. This is, <laughs> by the time this episode goes live, it's been out for if two weeks. If you fucking ruin part three for me right now, I will lose it. Uh, it was very emotional. I mean, I after we watched it, I like cried because like I usually don't watch things all the way through until I'm done editing them and then I'll finally watch them. I'll like watch chunks. So I watched the whole thing all the way through and yeah, it made me cry. I don't know. It was very, very sad. Of ending of a chapter but also like it was one of those things where we started filming something stupid that like i didn't we had no idea what we were doing and then you know god the universe i believe in god but you know the universe if whatever you believe in really guided the fuck out of it like oh. took control fully took control of it and turned it into something where i can't imagine not having made this like i don't think i would be uh, I think it would make me less of a person to not have posted this. So, so yeah, I'm just really grateful that the universe guided it and that we made it. The way that it all came together was honestly so insane because yeah, you were literally just let's pick up the camera and film something today. And because you had thought, Oh, I could show this palette. It turned into this whole other ordeal. And it felt like, and let me just say the universe is crazy too, because there was one other th idea that I had if the palette didn't work. If Je Jeffrey, if Jeffrey would have been like, no, don't show it. I had an alternative idea for something to show that I'm working on. And every time we've tried to film, because last year we tried to film like me talking about this project I'm trying to do. And it was out of focus the whole time. So I couldn't use any of that footage. And then this year we started filming and I, and then Chris is like, the camera just died. And I'm like, okay, it's a sign. It's weird. Every time I try to talk about what is it? I mean, now I'm afraid to even talk about it because I feel like I'm jinxing. It's Fuck, not, and it's you know, now I need to know, but I also can't <laughs> handle knowing. You've really complicated my life now, Shane. I'm sorry. Wow, what the fuck, man? Well, I have to go. Well, if you haven't already, watch all three parts of Shane's latest series. It is fantastic. I loved going on the whole ride throughout the duration of all of it because I was there. I was there. I didn't help edit, but I was there while you edited. And now that it's out, it's just so fun and rewarding. And I'm so happy for you. And I do think it's very incredible. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean, but he also talks that way about all of our sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chris asked an interesting question in the break he asked what it's like when we have angry sex oh okay. <laughs> i was just wondering that's something you want to delve into <laughs> what's better when you give me a gift sex or when i start a fake fight sex oh yeah is there a difference yeah, what, uh, are, yeah. are they exciting are well they... you're i mean you're more giving if there's a gift involved <laughs> Jesus. Oh. wait but when it's angry sex like because it, you said it's not 
Uh, like abusive, but is it no. aggressive in any way, no. or is it like there's I just like know. a tinge of a fight in know, the air? Chris, because I love sex. He might want to taste. <laughs> wow, sick. he's sick. The boy needs Jesus. I love sex. I come from a German family, and sex is not a thing that is not like shunned in Germany, like it is in America. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Take not- that. Sounds Yet like you-, you should take this open conversation to Germany yeah. then. <laughs> yeah, you've turned down all of our advances. <laughs> um, no, we don't want to have sex with Chris. But you can Shane, watch. No, we're never welcoming a third. And no hate to those who do. <laughs> oh, please. You would be even mo- I'm against it, but you would be even more against it. Wait, but you didn't answer the question. What was the question? About the aggressive side? <laughs> oh, it's so- not oh, aggressive. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no. I, gu- I mean, I guess we can get kind of aggressive. Well, it's more me getting aggressive with you. Mm-hmm. But it's not, like, dangerous. It's not This gross. is making Lizzie uncomfortable. Mm. <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> I mean, I feel like somebody as big as me and somebody as small as you, It's even if it's not on purpose, it's aggressive. <laughs> like, I feel like it's dangerous in general. So... Sometimes I think if Joe died on top of me, I'd be fucked. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, well, I can't move this body. It's like that Stephen King book. I'm and like, you'd be blamed. Fuck. Yeah. I just have to wait it out. Game. Were there yeah. any other Instagram questions that you wanted to respond to before we leave the the people? Before we exit the chat. Oh, oh, I thought this one was fun. Oh, Shane's wife smile, Queen. Uh, she said, if Shane Queen. had a cameo in your guys's Christmas movie, uh, what character would he play? Oh, I have some ideas. Do oh. you want to go? Well, he read the script. Let's yeah. let him go first. You go first. I feel like my character is not there yet. I think that's kind of true. Mm-hmm. But I also thought you could play his love interest. No. No? I can't sell that. You can't? <laughs> Are you kidding? I don't think I can. With that head of hair and your fucking facial routine? <laughs> I told you earlier, you've been looking fucking good. Don't say that. It's not real. No, it's real. Sometimes really? I literally stop when I'm watching Chris. the vlog and it's like... Does that mean I'm getting fat? This is a new era. No. Does that mean I'm getting weight? <laughs> no. Because of Chris's interest. No. no, there's something like there's something like nice and relaxed and natural and lovely and a glow. Whoa. Like, honestly. Thank you, Lizzie. I wish, I mean, can you give me a compliment? Yeah. I give you compliments every day. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Labor. Uh. No. I say the same thing to joke. You say one nice thing about me. No, Rylan's version of a compliment is just not yelling at me. Oh my gosh. You're making me out to be a monster. <laughs> Um, anyways, uh, thank you, Lizzie. Uh, thank you, Chris. Do you want a cameo in our Christmas movie? Oh. Yeah, I mean, of course, but like you know, I, yeah, I'm trying to think. I, I I was I didn't read it thinking anybody felt like me. Yeah, but you know, if you want to throw in, you know, give me something weird. Yeah, yeah. If we if we show the the callers in the opening scene, I also thought about putting Joe in as the bartender at oh, the Christmas that could party. Be fun. Yeah. All right, we'll find you a place for our Christmas movie that's definitely being made. Absolutely. And funded. Yeah. Yeah. If not by us, by someone else. <laughs> <laughs> no. What? You are not I mean, if not script. by someone else, by us. Yeah, okay. Thank Sorry, you. reverse. <laughs> All right. So I'm freezing. It's like the fucking Titanic right you now. Like, I'm just like, unwell. Yeah. You're literally I unwell. Feel my are you cold, Chris? Yes. Shane said he was cold. Okay. I have a question. Side note. I just thought of something. I thought of an easy cameo, but I feel like I should have something a little meatier. Yeah. Uh, I was like, oh, I could just be one of the people in the beginning of the movie, not to give it away, but you guys kiss like a million people. Yeah. Oh, I could just be one of the people you guys kiss. But then I started thinking, when I was reading it, it felt like. Uh, you wrote it. It was almost like a fantasy. Like you were kissing so many people. See, Joe doesn't like that either, and he won't read the script because of it. I thought it Ugh. to me, it felt kind of like okay. Remember, uh, Bros. Uh, I saw a review of Bros, and somebody's like, it feels like Billy Eichner wrote this because he wanted to like have love scenes with a bunch of like hot guys. Yeah. I felt like reading your script at that point. I was like, oh, she's trying to kiss a bunch of people. Oh. To be honest, the original like treatment that we sent had in no kisses, had no kissing. Was so... My character had no love interests whatsoever. Oh. Which is why and their note was she needs one. Yes. And it has to have that. And because in my mind, our relationship is the relationship of the film. And it still is. Mm-hmm. Um so I added that in because it feels frivolous and light and fun. Mm. And I don't know if you notice, but every single kiss that she has is absurd. Mm. and quick mm. and that's also why i'm thinking like joe's the bartender oh, i think the most intimate kiss would be the one between her and the doctor mm. um but that one's even absurd and i have a real real i have like a romance arc yeah you have a real romance arc. are you gonna have a problem with that 
I was just going to ask, would it bother either of you if the other one kissed someone for a role for a movie? No, no. there's so many people on set, and it's so okay. unromantic that it's like... Well, yeah, but sometimes... Remember when we first started dating, I was kissing YouTubers in videos, and there was nobody on set. And you didn't care. No. <laughs> uh, no, you can kiss anybody. Yeah, I mean, listen, like, I'm not a jealous person. I wish you were a little more jealous. <laughs> but you, you've gotten there. You've gotten there. Oh, it's his battery exhausted. It just went away. Did You're it lose kidding everything? me. It, it's probably still there. Well, thank you so much, Shane, for joining the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my phone's dead. This battery died. I guess it's a sign from the universe that we've had enough. You've had enough. Uh, if you want to follow us on social media, we're at the Sip Official. We're also on there personally. Make you sh- make sure you check out Shane's podcast as well, where Chris is also. Watch all three parts of Shane's new series. Lizzie posts vlogs every single Tuesday. Everywhere. Well, I'm going mad crazy now. Oh, in Vlogmas. She's a Vlogmas Monday, bitch. Wednesday, Friday. I don't know. Okay, no promises. <laughs> Hit that bell. You'll figure it out. Uh, thank you so much for watching and supporting our show. We love you so much. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. And, and that's, that's the sip. sip.